this week's stream, usually I have like a game. I can, like, I don't have, I already put Goosebumps away. It's already on the shelf because I was cleaning up. I have something I can show off and be like, oh, here's today's game. Look at this. Blah, blah, blah. These are old doodles of the Gatorbox logo because I need, um, I need, I'm going to need a notepad for tonight's game. You'll see why in a second. We're going to be playing games for smart people. And by that, I mean, there's, there's a variety of websites online that you can just go and do like math questions and logic questions and questions from varying education levels, you know, kindergarten through 12th grade, some college stuff as well. And I've been out of high school for over, for well over a decade now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to these websites and we're going to try a variety of subjects, right? They got math, which is what the, the notepad is for, the notepad and my uh, official uh, Amiga pen that I got from back in some shit on Kickstarter like five years ago. So this is for the math. We're going to do social studies. We're going to do some science. We're just going to be asking questions. We're going to make it like a, like an interactive thing. You know, you guys in chat can shout out answers. I don't care about spoilers. You can't spoil. It's math. You can't spoil math. But you can tell someone who's too fucking dumb to solve a math problem what the answer is. That's what we're going to do. So some of the sites I've picked out include uh, Brilliant.org, which I heard about on a number file video. And that's kind of what spurred me. That's what that's what jogged my memory to be like, oh man, I've been wanting to do this for a while. So brilliance on the list. We have the art of problem solving, and then we also have the Khan Academy, which is not which is not a school. It's named after me because it's K H A N, not K O N, but phonetically it's identical. So we get to go to my academy, and of course because it's K H A N, we have the Khan, the fucking w William Shatner Star Trek quote. That was a goddamn nightmare when I was younger. Everyone who thought they were a fucking comedian walked up to me and did that number. They were like, Khan! I'm like, what's your fucking, what are you, dumb? Like, you're like the 30th person that's done that to me today. What's the matter with you people? Logic, the, the joy of problem solving, algebra through puzzles, number theory, which I'm sure is probably great, mathematical fundamentals has the most terrifying, that's not a clock, that's a compass. What direction is the square root of 0.01? What is that? What? That's not West. Probability? I know that the probability of me getting any of these right is somewhere around 0%. That's, so we're just going to go, uh, oh, I also like down here, physics of the everyday as opposed to uh, physics of the sometimes. And the uh, nice little uh, Japanese wave art that they got going on there. Outside the box geometry. Mostly geometry is about the box. So when you're going outside the box, uh-oh, uh-oh. You can't do that in geometry. You, that's not. You can't do that on television. You can't do that in geometry. Can't do that. Advanced. Oh, th what, what, what category was this? Foundational math. Oh, okay. Now we get into advanced math. Calculus done right, as opposed to when I do it when it's calculus done wrong. Oh, advanced science. Quantum objects. Is that a cat? Is that a cat controlling the world? What the fuck kind of science is that? You can't prove that. So you guys can see, we ran through these categories, told some jokes, but let's go back to the homepage and check out the problems of the week. When I went here, this, I, I, I told you I solved this one just because I was figuring out how this, how this works. So here's an example of the problem. An artist has a bird-shaped gallery. I think the artist is a fucking idiot. That ain't art. That's bogus. To ensure the museum is fully guarded, he places four guards at the corners with red dots so that every inner wall is visible by at least one guard. Can he fully guard the museum with fewer guards? And the answer is yes with only two because I figured out the puzzle. If he puts one right here and he puts one right here, then if you, you know, do it on, on your screen, you can see, I mean, the guy who's right here can see all of this and this wall and then everything out here and the guy who's standing right here can see all of this. So they, that's the answer. So with that said, I got it correct. 48% of people got this right. It's just like those advertisements that says, is this image real or fake? 98% of people can't tell the difference and it's a dude with a Photoshop and his face is fucking massive and somehow that's not a real pic. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Seven identical regular hexagons are arranged in a honeycomb pattern. If each hexagon has an area of eight, then what is the area of triangle ABC? So the hexagon in the middle is eight. 
So the answer has to be more than eight. And I noticed all the answers are more than eight, so there goes... <laughs> that does not help me at all. So obviously, we got to figure out how much each of those slivers adds up to. It's going to add up to a whole number, though. Because there's no decimals in the multiple choice. Uh, yeah, but I don't know how to find... I, don't know, I do not know how to find the area of a hexagon. I don't remember. If the area is eight... Okay, it's the area of the rectangle plus the two triangles. So if the area is eight... Okay, let me draw this out. The side... Let's say the uh, three, the vertical is three and the top is two. That makes six, which means that I'm figuring this out. So the triangles on the sides, if this middle area is six, it's going to be one quarter of the rectangle inside the hexagon. So that's 1.5, 1.5. That makes three. So it's three plus six, which is nine plus. 8, which is 17, which is not an answer. So I've already, I've already fucked up. They fucking knew that I was going to do that. Look, the answer goes 14, 15, 16, 18. Linking an equation is not against the rules. You can help me, you can help me answer these questions as, as much or as little as you want. You can give me the wrong equation to find the area of a hexagon if you want to be a dick about it. Like, it's, it's all good. I'm going with 16. Let's just submit it. All right, 73% of people got this right. How many of them guessed? Are, oh, okay. I already know what this problem is before I've even read it. You need eight liters of petrol. Using two containers that can hold 12 and nine liters, you can do any of the following actions as many times as you like. Fill a container to its brim, completely empty a container, pour petrol from one container to another. Is it possible to get exactly eight liters in either container? Why don't? Better question. Let's disregard math. Let's use uh, street smarts as opposed to book smarts. Why not just fill up the nine liter one so that you have an extra liter just in case? Just in case you might need, you know, eight is not enough to get you from point A to point B. You got an extra. Better yet, just fill up the 12 one and then you're really going to make it. I, I know this trick because it was the thing worth like the milk gallon, the gallon jugs. Also, the person who created this one is a 14 year old from Singapore. That is totally plausible. I'm thinking. So obviously, if you fill up the 12 liter one, and then you dump it into the nine, you'll have three liters left over in the uh, the uh, the 12 liter one. That doesn't help me because eight is not a multiple of three, so you you could not keep doing that. So I think the answer to this equation deals with whether or not these these two containers share a common multiple and then theoretically you could reach that multiple if you just kept dumping gas out from each why why are you why are you wasting the gas well you got just fucking made of money over there you know how much gas costs you have need eight liters of clean coal <laughs> oh okay let's see <laughs> Fandramon. This just sounds like a waste of gas tossing it out and moving it around. See, Fandramon's got what you call street smarts. I don't know how good she is in the book smarts department. This is book smarts. Street smarts, Fandramon is like, you're wasting gas. I'm like, just fill up the nine because then you'll definitely have enough to get to where you need to go. So I'm going to guess and just say no because who cares? Yes! Only two-thirds of people got that right. 66%. That, oh, that means two-thirds. I know that much. I still can't highlight it correctly. Two identical rows of 1,000 dominoes are initiated. They are initiated. And they are initiated. That's how you know it's a math problem. They are initiated in two different ways. In row A, the first domino is barely tipped over and hits the second domino in one second. In row B, the first domino is pushed so that it hits the second domino in 0.33 seconds. How long will the two rows take to finish falling? The same. Right? Is What are the answers? Row B finishes in about one-third, two-thirds of time, or they take the same amount of time. Yeah, they take the same amount of time to finish falling because it doesn't matter how long you take to push the first one down. Once you do that, they all just go... Ch -ch 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 -ch. They all just do that at the same speed. So the answer is... Also, where do you get that many four, three dominoes? Anyways, it's this one. It's got to be. Only 51% of people got... Eh, what? What? You go back here, fucking 66% of the people got this gas problem right. Fucking 73 got this stupid hexagon one. These two, 
puzzles had more people solve it than my dumbass looking at that saying, oh yeah, they both fall at the same speed. What? How the fuck does that work? This guy, this, you know what the problem is? Is that this question, the people who go on this website are too smart. They look at this, they're like, oh, one second, mm, 0.33, that is one third of one second. So therefore, when you push the domino down, they will, it, it's, that is one, that is one third the length of the, of A. B is one third shorter, so the answer has, has got to be, uh, the top one. You fucking idiots. Why don't you spend, if you spent less time writing math problems and more times telling jokes for a living, you probably wouldn't got that question wrong. It's not a cookie. It's a my friend and I play a game in which we take turns placing identical coins on a circular table one at a time. Let me tell you something. First of all, if that's your idea of a game, you do not have any friends. I place the first coin on the empty table. The coins are placed flat on the table. They cannot overlap or go over the edge of the table. The person who places the last coin on the table wins. Which player can always win if they play optimally? See, these are the types... This is why people who are uh, mathematics specialists, this is why they do not create board games because this is, the, this is the type of shit that they come up with. No one wants to play that game. What if I invite my friends over and be like, Hey, Beach Dog, the guy who was here a couple weeks ago, you want to come over and, and play quarters on the table with me? Beach Dog will probably give me any, any reason to just tell me to go fuck myself. It'd be like, no, Draco, actually, I would rather just die. I can't actually I can't come over because uh, I have other plans today. My plans are to just sit on my couch uh, and and do actually absolutely nothing. Okay, just LSD is applying some logic. He says it cannot be determined. Reason it out. What if the table was one inch wide and the coins were one inch wide? The player one wins. So I'd be inclined to agree. Also, who has a table? Is it a Barbie table? Is it a dollhouse table? Who's got a table that's only that big? As big as a quarter. What is <laughs> this? Oh yeah, this 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 picture does not necessarily show optimal play. Yeah, I would think so because these people like you're not stacking them correctly. What are you fucking doing here? Put this. I go for the center square. I'm gonna put mine way out here. So I'm gonna say it cannot be determined. I agree with chat. Oh come on! You don't. The best learners allow themselves to make mistakes. Yeah, and the best learning websites stick a fucking emoji next to incorrect to show you that you got it wrong. Oh yeah, well we just go to the intermediate one then. Let's take a look at this. Oh, okay, we've already that's it. We went from zero to zero to hundred on that, huh? P K is the number of petals in a rose formed by the polar equation R with the cosine of K theta? Is that theta? I see the one that looks like a zero, it's not zero. For example, P4 equals 8 because R, which is the cosine of 4 theta, has 8 petals, and P5 equals 5 because R cosine 5 theta has 5 petals. Is there a positive integer K such that P K equals 2018? This is one of those, uh, this is one of those questions that it doesn't matter how many times I read it, I'm like, I'm not gonna know what to do. So let's break this let's break this down. Let's break this down. This is what a brilliant person does. Look again, we're going back to book smarts, street smarts, yes or no. I got a coin's flip of a chance of getting this correct, even if I don't know how to solve the equation. So let's get back, let's consult. This is gonna become a staple of the stream. Let's consult the Pepsi Wizard, the Pepsi Pog with the wizard casting a Pepsi spell. And we're gonna flip it. Uh, heads is of course the wizard, tails is the back. Heads it's yes, tails it's no. Don't steer me wrong, Pepsi wizard. Let me flip that again and actually catch it. Let's see. Heads. Oh, fucking Pepsi wizard, God damn it. For a 100 meter race, Adam's race time ranges from 10 to 12 seconds. And Benjamin's race, Benjamin's ranges from 11 to 13 seconds. Both times are independent and uniformly distributed. If Adam and Benjamin run a 100 meter race, what is the probability that Adam wins? Zero, because Adam is white. But that's not an answer over there, so Street Smarts doesn't come into play on this question. Clearly, Adam runs, uh... If I, if I, if I get this correct, then <laughs> Pizza Sound Pizza gets a sub? Oh shit. Well, there's a, <laughs> Sound Pizza, there's a 25% chance that you're going to be walking out of this with a free Gator Box sub courtesy of Electric Sheep City. So, 
Uh, let's take a look at this. Adam is clearly the faster of the two because Benjamin's best time is still one second slower than Adam's best time. And uh, Adam's worst time is one second faster than Benjamin's worst time. So let me write this out. We got 10, 11, 12 for Adam. And then Benjamin starts at 11, 12, and 13. And so they, they share... So Adam has 10 seconds that's specific to him and they share in common 11 and 12 seconds so if Benjamin runs 13 okay I'm, I'm, I'm planning Adam winning not a tie that's correct so okay if Adam goes so let's so we have to plot out all the different methods that he can win all the scenarios if Adam goes 10 seconds then he will beat Benjamin every single time. So that's three wins for Adam, because 10 beats all those. If Adam goes 11 seconds, he will only win twice for 12 and 13. So 12 and 13, and then one loss, or one if they tie. If Adam goes 12 seconds, there's one win, one tie, and one loss. So we add that together, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, plus three. So it's 6 over 9, which is 2 thirds, which is not an option. Fucking math. Fucking Adam. That's out of 9 possible scenarios, he wins 6 of them. That's 2 thirds. Why is that not a thing? Am I, am I fucking it up? Like, you guys, you guys see my logic, right? Okay, so there's 3 times, there's 2... So there's there's two different sets of and now I'm thinking okay there's two different sets of three which is six. So I'm gonna guess five sixths. I'm guessing five. I'm just gonna go with that. Motherfucker! What's the uh, seven eighths? Motherfucker! Their times over two thirds of their times overlap. You said mm. if I get it, you know what probably they probably don't do that because if it's a question where it's like. 2% of the people get it right. They don't want to be they don't want to admit that their question sucks. I didn't get it. Sorry, Sound Pizza, I let you down. You don't get a free sub. Go to the next one. A tree undergrows a sprouting growth. That is not a tree off to the right. That is my that is my street smart's opinion of that not lining up with how I know reality. If the tree sprouts an infinite number of branches, what is its total height? Oh, I don't get a choice. I gotta put in a number of oh shit. Well, Electric Sheep City uh, defaults to uh, 42, being the answer to life, the universe, and everything. I would be inclined to agree. Marley puts $1 on the line if I get this correct, so I have an incentive to get that correct, even though after PayPal takes a cut, I'll get 67 cents, but still. <laughs> you making clips of me doing this now? <laughs> it's 32. And then those little branches, everything is everything's a third. Because 120 degrees is one-third of a circle. You see it over there, the little, little pie chart it makes over there. Everything's a third. So it's 30... Height. Height. How does the... Electric Sheep City says if it's not 42, he'll donate 20 bucks. So I'm going to throw this question and just for this... I'm doing it for the cash, folks. What? No! You tricked me! I leveled up though. I leveled up. That's that's cut off at the bottom of the screen because of the way I cropped it. But I, I'm algebra level one. That's as high as I never thought I'd get that high. Oh, this one's got a gif. You know this one's real. Look at this. Look at this fucking kid. All right. Oh shit. Is he Devin? Hell yeah. Dude, he. <laughs> yeah. Throw those bottles. Okay. A lot of skill goes into whether you can achieve a bottle flip, but with a bit of physics, you can maximize your chances by optimizing the volume of water in the bottle. I wish Reflex were here because he is really good at this. Over or under filling the bo water bottle yields a high center of gravity, which can cause the bottle to tip over on landing, even if the throw is otherwise perfect. Then it's not a perfect throw. Anyways, if it tips over, it's not. So, whatever. Street smarts. Treat an empty water bottle as a cylinder with a mass of 12 grams evenly distributed along its length. What is the water level H in centimeters such that the bottle's center of gravity is the lowest? The density of water is 1 gram per cubic centimeter. 
I also noticed I get to punch in a number for this one, and it says use three significant digits. I know what that means. It's going to be a decimal up to three places. Is that is that picture showing the optimum water fill? As it matches what that kid's doing with the, the little dabbing kid down there is distracting me. Again, another fucking... This is the... We've got two questions from this guy already. What, is he going to fill out a profile? He hasn't had a profile yet because he's not even old enough to go to any fucking math competitions, but he's already posting gifts of kids dabbing with water bottles. Would you learn how to do math? Vine? I don't even know how to solve this one. Oh, it's... No, oh, answer must be a check, says no someone doesn't, I can't fuck around with it like that, okay. Incorrect, the answer is 2.27008325. You only said I had to do three significant digits, you didn't have to go that far. That just goes to show, a simple no would have done, a simple no would have done. Every other time so far I get it wrong, you never tell me what the answer is. But this is when you're like, no, actually, the answer, this is the fucking, this is white-splaining, man-splaining, cis-splaining, hetero-splaining, Fuck off, brilliant. A light ray emitted from a vertex of this isosceles triangle reflects six times before reaching another vertex. What is the total length of the path of this ray? Wow. This, I don't know. So what, okay. So it's a 60 degree. So we don't know the full degree of this. This is only 60. So this comes here. If this is one, right? This is one. This makes an equilateral triangle. So these segments are all one. This is one. This is one. This looks like half. So okay, let's let's see if we can get let's see if we get three tries. Let's see if I can get close. So okay, let me write this down. Let me do uh, I mean I don't need to draw that so we get we're only counting the red lines. So we get one plus one and then we move here and then that's just two halves so that's plus another one and then we move here so this is a quarter plus a quarter which is half plus half this is not half of that like we're wrong already let's just let's just go along for the ride plus a fourth plus an eighth plus an eighth plus a sixteenth plus one sixteenth plus uh, let's ballpark it. Uh, let's see, that looks like about a third of that line over there, so plus 0.33. Okay, so now we gotta make these fractions into real numbers. 3.872 is what I've got. Let's see, let's see if I'm right. That's not gonna be correct at all. 3.872. Cement. Wow, what a surprise. Got that wrong. Jordan, thank you for the bits. These kids didn't come up with these problems. These are just desperate for homework answers. <laughs> They're smart. This kid, this, again, street smarts, not book smarts. These kids are like, oh, I don't know how to solve this, but I bet the people I'm brilliant might. <laughs> Look at the step. We were up here for a while, and then we went, Pfft. so if it's possible to get uh, negative questions correct, we might on the advance. Let's take a peep at this. It's getting, it's already 11 o'clock. God damn, I'm having fun getting angry at math, and we haven't even gotten off the first sight yet. Whoa, oh, I don't like the way that looks already. What is this? You trying to fucking decorate a skateboard tire? What? Is this Tony Hawk's Pro Skater? In the graphs above, only K4 can be drawn on a plane without any edge crossings as illustrated below. Okay, that makes sense. I, I, I understand this. This cannot be done with K5, yet it can be drawn on a torus, that means a donut, without any edge crossings. So, a square can do that. Pentagon, you'd have to do it on that. Can six and seven be drawn on a torus without edge crossings? No. There's too many. There's too many lines. There's too many dots. Hang on. Who did this? Thirty-five guy from Chile. You notice, you notice no Americans have submitted any questions. <laughs> that's not a racist statement. That's just saying look at where look at where we are as a country educationally. The square is possible in two dimensions. The pentagon requires three dimensions because this is supposed to be a three-dimensional object. So, can six and seven be drawn on this object without any edge crossings? And I want to say no, because if this is two dimensions and this is three, then you're going to need some fucking higher dimensional fourth dimension crap for this one and then something even worse for this one. 
So, my answer is no, neither can. Oh, fuck off. Agatha is at point A and needs to reach her son Damien at point D as soon as possible. She can swim at a constant rate and she can also run along the shore at a constant rate. Her swimming and running speeds are different. The diagram shows how long each segment takes her to travel. A direct route A to D takes 61 seconds, but so does a route of A, B, C, D. Find the minimum possible amount of time in seconds required for Agatha to reach Damien. Is Damien drowning? <laughs> Damien, not Daryl. Now, Daryl, he died, he got bitten, by, bitten to death by spiders in, in space, in Reptalia. He never made it home. So I think the I think the answer is like what if Agatha swims down here and then and then as soon as she gets here she goes up to here. So we're basically making a shape that looks like this. So it's somewhere between 61 and 36 seconds. It's between these two numbers. So I'm going to guess 42 cuz that seemed to work last time. Nope, that's not right. I'm I'm sorry, Damien's dead. Also, nice that Agatha is represented with an A and Damien with a D. I'm sure that was not intentional. Who the fuck names their kid Agatha? Why don't you just put Amber? Who wrote this? Was a question written in 1914? Oh, view the, inc view the solution. The answer is 56. Damn. If it's 56, just swim to him. It's five, the difference is five seconds. I mean, if he's already... If he's already brain dead, he's drowning. Who fucking cares? What's five more seconds? All right. Two quantum, a two-state quantum system is called a qubit. Qubit? A qubit can be realized by a photon which has two different polarization states, zero degrees and nine. There's, pro, there's something different there because there's some symbols which correspond to polarization along the vertical and horizontal axes respectively. The ability to precisely and reliably manipulate qubits is key to the advent of large-scale quantum computing. Wow, this is above my pay grade. This fucking guy from 32 from Germany, right? This dude's almost my age. He knows how to fucking do quantum math. I don't know. I ain't gonna read it. I'm gonna say 42. Oh, all right. Oh, that's quantum. I quantum did that. There's quantum four, three other quantum universes where I got it wrong. And those are bad timelines. We're in the best timeline right here, folks. Next question. We got one right. In school, each student is assigned a positive factor of 60 to the power of 60, but no student's number is the greatest common divisor of any other two student numbers. What is the maximum number of students in this school? One, because there's only one dickhead who's pompous enough to go there. One. Let's see if my smart-ass answer is correct. No? Two. He has one friend. It's Max and his buddy Adam. No, the answer is 3,007. Wow! It's great. Want to go deeper? Learn more in our number theory course. <laughs> no, no, man. The dude that wrote the... Oh, this is this is an American. He's 17. 17 and he's doing this kind of math. When I was 17 years old, I was jerking off to dragons on herpy. Thinner clouds are white and shiny all over. I believe the term is cirrus. Thick clouds, I believe the term is cumulus are shiny on the top and dark at the bottom. This effect is caused by incident sunlight scattering off of water droplets in the cloud. Since the sunlight is incident from the top, less light makes it through to the cloud. You know, to rise, we're looking at a darker bottom. Suppose that the water droplets in the cloud are 20 nanometers in diameter. Oh shit, that's the width of, <laughs> up, <laughs> that's between, it's between eight and five nano cars. <laughs> that would be zero out of five if I didn't just guess. <laughs> this is not a plug for Brilliant, by the way. I mean, it's a great site if you want to feel like a fucking idiot. If you want, how much does it cost to do Brilliant? How much can I be Brilliant for? Lifetime pass is six hundred dollars. If you're willing to pay six hundred bucks to Brilliant.org to tell you that you are stupid at any point. Pay me 600 bucks. I will do that. I will make it fun. You can just text me anytime. Hey, DracoCon, am I an idiot? Yes, you are fucking stupid. Kill yourself. Thanks for the money, you fucking idiot. You're so stupid, you gave me $600 to call you dumb for the rest of your fucking life. That's how dumb you are. Click. <laughs> Live chat just popped up. What's on your mind? Let me know if I can answer any... <laughs> 
any questions about our brand new service? <laughs> what if we link the person in chat to the fucking questions that we get? To? <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, I do have a question. If light diffuses through a cloud at 20 nanometers and the clouds are darker on the bottom than they are on the top, <laughs> I don't need your help.